Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics with another fun DIY project using the Scandy 2 Christmas Collection from Andover Fabrics. Just look at this adorable stocking advent garland that you can make for your family. We had an absolute blast making this. This is just one panel. All you have to get is a panel and a little bit of extra fabric for the back of each stocking. Let me show you what that looks like. And of course, the cute little candy canes in there are just a fun surprise for the little ones. So you will cut out your stockings and then you have your backing. That's the first project and I'll show you how to actually um, construct the garlands. Very simple. The instructions are on the panel, but I'll just explain that to you and save you the step of trying to read that and decipher that. The second project that we came up with with this um, stocking panel was something for our uh, place setting. Like I'm, I'm going to have the... Scandy Christmas 2 uh, table runner, which was a previous video we've shot um, on my table. And then I have a really beautiful um, place setting of, of kind of ba like bone colored china with red. And then I thought, wouldn't this be fun to take this same panel and I put the silverware and maybe a, like a little candy cane in there and that just rests on top of the plate. So again, just a fun way to dress up your table. So this isn't just for the little ones. You can do some fun things with this for your table um, decor. So it really just dresses up the table. Let me show you how uh, we start off. Let's start off with the garland and then we'll move on to the um, the place setting and the little bit of the silverware and the candy cane. So of course, you're, there's 24 stockings and they also added some gift tags. There's also um, six gift tags on there. So how fun is that? So that's just a bonus. So the first thing that we did is we just roughly cut around uh, each of the stockings. Now there's the dash line, that's the cut line. But initially we just cut even outside of that, just roughly around, as you can see right here. I have a piece of the backing fabric. Let's just put this aside for the moment. So I put my backing fabric and I put that right side down and I put my stocking on top and you can pin those together if you'd like or you can just hold them and you're going to go ahead and cut right on the line uh, until you have both of those cut out and they'll be the exact same shape. That's why we're going to cut them out together. So we'll just quickly cut out. Now that that's cut out, let's take that to our pressing mat. The first thing that we'll do, and we'll actually do this on both pieces, it's very straightforward, is of course, that's where we want to have showing. So we're just going to fold that down till that is, and that's about a quarter of an inch. So, you know, if you're a quilter, you're used to seeing that quarter of an inch. If you're not a quilter, that's about what a quarter of an inch measures. And you can always use a little ruler if you want to just check it. And we'll do the same with our back piece. So whatever you turn this down here, turn that down the same there. This is such a simple little project. It goes together in no time. Then we'll take this to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew about an eighth of an inch here, about an eighth of an inch here, and then when we come back we'll go to the next step. So I've turned those edges down and uh, ran the top stitch. Now what we'll do is, this is of course going to be your front, you'll put right sides together and that, we're going to actually flip that over so that we can see that line where we want to sew. So I do recommend pinning this together so there's no shifting. And you're going to sew right on that line very carefully all the way around. Don't forget to reinforce at the, uh, the beginning. Go forward and reverse and then the same at the end because of course that's where it might come apart as you're putting the silverware in and out or a candy cane or whatever you're going to put in there. So when I come back I will have that already sewn and then I want to show you how I clip it and where we clip it so when you turn it right side out it's as smooth as possible. So I've sewn around my stocking very carefully on the line and now as you can see that's a lot of bulk. That's a big seam allowance so I recommend you go in with some scissors 
and you're going to trim that down till maybe an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just take your time. You definitely don't want to cut through your stitches that you just made. And we'll come all the way around like that. And that's generally true if you have a really big seam allowance. You might want to trim it down. Now, it's in these corners that it sometimes doesn't want to give. So sometimes we'll come in with these scissors like this and just cut in a little bit of relief cuts, I call them, so that when we do turn it, it'll kind of give more than just hold rigid. But again, don't, don't cut too deep or you're going to cut into those threads. I think that's probably good enough. Okay, and then all that's left to do is turn right side out and press, of course. So that's, um, that's how you'll make the stocking um, garland. Now, for the actual place setting, of course, you could make this exactly the same way, but I wanted a thicker, kind of more quilted look, and so I did do mine just a little bit differently. Let me just finish turning this right side out. Look at that. How cute is that? And you're in this is a neat thing because your kids can use this year, year over year. Now how we secured that is we just got a piece of jute and we just found some cute wooden um, clothespins and then they're just clipped to that line. So, and then we just threw in some candy cane. So there's a little treat for the little ones. So whatever turning tools you use to get everything out nice and smooth, just grab those, turn everything right side out and take it to the pressing mat and press it nice and flat. So let's move on to the play setting. Again, like I said, I wanted a little bit thicker of a quilted look. In fact, let me show you what I have here. So if you can look inside there, you can see how it's quilted and it's lined because this is something where you will be actively in and out of there and I didn't want to have any raw seams. So let me get started. Same thing as before. You're just going to roughly cut around your shape. And what's different about this one than this is on the play setting, you don't really want the numbers showing. That's why this is different. And notice how this is a lot shorter because we didn't want the numbers showing. It didn't make sense when it's a, on a play setting. On an advent calendar, of course, it makes sense, but not for the table setting. So roughly cut around that, and you'll need two other, uh, actually three other pieces that are cut six by eight. Let me just double check, we have about six by eight. And we came up with that measurement only because that kind of accommodates the size of all those stockings. And you'll also cut a piece of batting. So you've got three pieces plus your stocking. Put that one aside, I think that one's extra. And your batting will also be cut to the six by eight. Now, what we want to do, if you can visualize this, the lining fabric needs to be um, this way, because that's the, that's the front, that's the lining, this is the lining on the inside, and that's the lining, that, that's the back. So make sure you layer that uh, right side down, right side up, right side down, right side up, and the batting, of course, doesn't matter. Now, we're going to go ahead and pin all of that together, and we're going to cut everything all at the same time. When I come back, I'll take you to the next step. I've cut out all my pieces as a unit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that unit to the side. Now, like I mentioned, I don't want the number showing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my pins down so that I have that area uninterrupted. Now I'd like the area showing to be right above this kind of beaded area. There's kind of a dark line there. So what I'm going to do with my ruler, this is where these little rulers come in so handy, is I'm going to cut a quarter inch above where I want that, the top of the stocking to be, and I'm going to cut that as a unit. So let's cut all that away. And I'm going to take my pins out because it's a little bit tough to put your ruler there because the, the ruler kind of wants to ride up on top of those um, pins. I don't think I got as clean of a cut as I would have liked. So let me do that again here. I think that's, that's probably better there. Yes. Okay. For now, I want you to go ahead and take the batting piece away and put it to the side. From here, you'll take this to the pressing mat and you're going to turn that under the quarter of an inch. You'll turn that under the quarter, turn this one under a quarter, 
and those other two under a quarter as well. And then once that's done, we'll go to the next step. My four fabric pieces were each turned under the quarter inch and pressed. Now the batting, remember, was cut the same. So if you put the batting, see how it's extending above that? A couple options here. You can, you can take this with this, the printed stocking and just take your ruler up to that and be sure, be sure you don't trim off where you just tucked under. So that's why I'm saying be careful. You may instead just want to, so you don't have that risk of maybe cutting that off, um, taking this to your cutting mat and just trimming that down from that blunt edge, a quarter of an inch, maybe just slightly less or slightly more. Because what you'll do now is with your stocking, the printed stocking, you're going to lift that up you're gonna tuck that batting in, and that flap's gonna go over like this, okay? Then, with the backing, you'll line all of this up, and that will be stitched. So we're gonna take that to the sewing machine, and we'll stitch, oh, maybe just right underneath here. Now that's where this will be, uh, the, the uh, thread will be showing. So that's where that, um, assortment of 75 colors from the Masterpiece collection comes in. That's why it's so nice to have a variety of colored threads. So when your threads are on the top, it looks nice. I just have a cream in here, and I think I think most of the, these have a cream, and it looks just as cute. But if you want a coordinating thread, be sure to check out the 75 colors that we have for Masterpiece. So you'll stitch right here. Now with the backing, the two, the two other pieces, you're gonna do the same. Um, where you have those edges folded under and you're gonna sew again the eighth of an inch. And when we come back, we're gonna put the whole thing together and I'll show you how to finish this. The next step will be to place those two pieces together, one right on top of the other. Now don't worry if you've got a little bit of batting sticking out. Do you see that right there? The reason being is we're gonna go ahead and come in at the very end with a pinking blade, and, and that's what gives that cute little um, kind of country look that I like so much. So don't worry if that's kind of shifted a little bit. That shifted on mine as well. But what you'll do now is pin that together as best you can all the way around, and you're going to sew on that line. Again, pivoting at those corners, just take your time come all the way around, and then I'll show you how to pink the edge and we'll be done with our project. Now that we've sewn around our stocking, that's when I get to use that pinking blade that I absolutely love, it's so much fun. Now, if you're not familiar with the pinking blade, um, this will fit a standard 45 millimeter rotary cutter. So you can either just change that out of the rotary cutter you have, or you might wanna have a second rotary cutter and that blade's just ready to go. So it just depends on how often you think you'll be using that. Now, if you'll look at what I did here is I just trying to keep a reasonable distance all the way around the stocking. It is several layers to go through, so give a good push. You do have to get it, stay right in there. And then you'll just pivot around. Kind of notice how I'm turning the stocking versus trying to turn me. It's much simpler. Now, if you get a couple areas that are like that, that happens sometimes in the blade. We've used this blade a lot. That's not a problem. I, it seems like it works a little bit better if you go in with some other scissors versus trying to, trying to get back in there with that and find the same exact spot. And it's usually just a few places. There we go. And now we're completely done. So then all you'll need to do is put in your silverware or a candy cane or both and you'll be just your table is just going to be so so cute how fun is that and it'll be right on top of the, the dinnerware so you know we always are shooting videos for christmas and there's lots of, of great projects there so if you want some more home decor projects be sure to subscribe to that youtube channel so we can share our inspiration with you